Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the meeting of the Archives Committee. Our first item of uh, on the agenda is to elect the vice chair for the municipal year 2022 to 2023. May I have nominations, please? Traditionally, the, the vice chairman is um, from the Neath Patalbert. Council. Is it? Yeah, we've got one from Swansea. We need one from Neath Patalbert. Oh, sorry. Sorry. We've got one from Swansea. So one from Neath Patalbert. Are there any proposals? Okay. They were nominated, uh, Wayne, that's okay then, uh, Yeah. So um, we have that one no nomination. Uh, Wayne Carpenter, is everybody in agreement to that? Yes. Uh, lovely, thank you very much indeed. Happy to accept, Chair. Good, thank you very much, Wayne. Next item, Gareth, apologies for absence. Do we have any? Yeah, from Louise Miskell and Andrew Dully, Chair. Thank you. And the third item is our disclosures of personal and prejudicial interests. Are there any interests to disclose? No. OK, thank you very much. Next item is the minutes of the last meeting, which was held on the 30th of September. Just go through them page by page. Item one. Page two. And page three. Do I have your approval that they are a correct record of the meeting? Yes, thank you very much indeed. And Kim, may I hand over to you for your report, please? Thank you, Chair. Um, just on the uh, matters arising from the minutes, I'll just um, mention because I think everything that is um, uh, could be matters arising um, is contained in my report. But I'll just mention that the archive trainee post will shortly be advertised. In fact, it might already be advertised. Um, so uh, I think that's not covered in my report. So if we move on to my portal report, which uh, is uh, starts on page four. And uh, as is customary, um, the first uh, paragraph relates to the use of the service in the last quarter. Um, the figures are, are given in the report there. You'll see they're slowly creeping back up again. Uh, however, they are far less than the um, the use of the service as it was pre-COVID. And uh, I think we're not alone in this as a as a public service. Um, the um, it's, it's, it's round about half of where we were in early uh, uh, 2020 or the um, the same quarter uh, three years ago back in the uh, uh, late uh, 2019 and it has been a very slow climb back from uh, very low figures in the periods in between the lockdowns and um, as I say in the report I think that the um, the key constituency of our users that has not come back to use the archives are the family historians. Um, if we go back about 10 or more years ago, um, family historians were about half our users. Um, one of the things we, we have done over the over the years is put more, um, uh, more of our resources online on the family history websites, Ancestry and Find My Past and, and The Genealogist, that's uh, another website we're on. Um, and obviously that does have effect, uh, an effect on the number of people that uh, come in to actually view the original documents. Um, we get royalties from from 
those items being available and it is obviously making our resources available to a much wider worldwide audience across the uh, across the internet so it's a um a trend which will continue no doubt as more and more items are digitized over the the coming years uh, so it's it's to be expected that the number of people who come in to use the original documents rather than viewing them on screen is going to um, decline. However, um, the uh, I think the pandemic has hit um, the archives and archive services generally very, very hard. Um, if you're listening to the Today programme this morning coming from Nottingham, you uh, have heard about the museum and heritage sector also being very hard hit by um, uh, the, uh, the the failure of um, audiences to return to heritage and museum sites as well. So this, this is right across the whole of the heritage sector and we're just um, also subject to it as well. Um, I think that also partly relates to the fact that the the users of archives tend to be amongst the older age range. I think when we did some uh, analysis uh, a few years ago, certainly the average age was was uh, quite high and um, and that's probably the age range that is less confident about just coming out for um, you know, if, if they don't need to come out uh, to uh, to come out and, and spend a uh, uh, period of time in a uh, public public building. Um, I should also mention at this point uh, the Neath Mechanics Institute and uh, the the fact that we have not managed to uh, uh, re-establish broadband service in the Mechanics Institute, which Personally, I find very embarrassing. I'm very sorry that I can see uh, Mrs. Watkins is here from the Neath Antiquarian Society. Um, I can assure you that it does not um, reflect on any uh, uh, attempt by uh, either the council or the archive service to um, um, uh, to close the Mechanics Institute or anything. It's just a very unfortunate accident that the um, uh, we were just talking about this before the meeting started that the uh, broadband service collapsed there and I haven't managed to find a supplier at the moment um, who, who can provide a service. Uh, I'm having a meeting with Craig and with a number of his colleagues next week. I'll report back to you, uh, Jan, about the uh, from the outcome of that meeting. All I can say is I'm very sorry that it's, it's happened and uh, it's it's obviously affected use of the service. However, uh, we spoke before this meeting a couple of weeks ago and uh, you've uh, given me the figures for use on Thursdays by members, which uh, are flourishing. Uh, the, uh, I hope you'll continue with that. And obviously I can continue reporting that to the committee uh, because although archive staff aren't involved in that process, um, uh, it's uh, it shows that the, the, there is a flourishing membership in the Neath Antiquarian Society who want to to come and use the uh, Mechanics Institute on a Thursday, and I hope that will continue even if and when we re-establish re the full service that you will have uh, sessions for members as well, which would be good. So that's been uh, a little bit of a frustration with regard to Neath. Um, I'll, I'll pause at this point to for comments and questions from members if they wish to to make comment on that. Any comments <clears throat> or observations? Oh, sorry, no. oh. Yes. Councillor Black, Peter. Yes, thanks, Chair. Um, just a question on the um, the bottom part of this table um, hits the archive service websites, online catalog, etc. I'm I'm probably missing something, but why have we got NA for the previous year's figures? I um, I think we should by this point actually have those figures um, at the period of the. Uh, 
Yes, there would have been hits on the uh, the, the website and the online catalog. I think I, I can provide those figures after the meeting. I think that's probably the easiest thing. I think the, the NA stands for not available, but that means yeah, they were yeah. not available this time last year, but they will be available by now. Uh, so it's a it's a uh, error on my part in putting those uh, things in because the the figures would have been available shortly after me just at the, at the period this time last year they weren't available um and so uh they will have uh, they will be there so so i can provide those figures uh retrospectively uh to you okay thanks anybody else Lyndon. great thank you chair uh just to say can i encourage everybody to um share Facebook um, posts that the archive put up and in fact uh, tweets, uh, retweet them. Uh, I do that regularly and they get well received actually and the more people that actually know about the archive service the better. So it's quite a simple thing to do when they do come up just you know share them uh, and if people could that would certainly uh, go some way to help to build up the numbers again. Thank you, Lyndon. That's a very good point to make. And I think, as you say, it's very simple to do. Yes. Uh, Councillor Smith? Yeah, I, I, I'd echo that. But what I would say as well is I think, as, as Kim alluded to, the nature of the way people are using archives is changing. Um, you know, there's more online access. And yes, it, it's possible to access a lot of material from home, but that doesn't diminish from the importance of an archive collection where there may be a different type of usage of what happened before, perhaps less mechanic and less going through lists, but more, more of it focused on the actual collection rather than um, list and indexes, which used to be what had to go, th someone had to go through to get details of family members, details of, of what's in the collection and so on. So I think that's probably a national trend came and that we're picking up that and that doesn't diminish from the fact that the archives still play a crucial role um, and is an important part of, of people's lives. Uh, thank you for those comments. I, I totally agree and I think one of the things about the catalogue going online is that we've sort of joined a well, a, an international network of archives that are available. So, you know, you could have somebody in Brazil, for example, finding something in our catalogue online. Um, obviously, they wouldn't be visiting the archives, but they would could request a scanned copy. So the way that um, uh, people are using archives is changing. And this is, you know, it's, it's, it's our, our collections are becoming part of world heritage, more or less. And certainly, you know, some of our collections are of uh, national and international importance. So, um, yeah, it, it's the way um, the, the, the archive collections are of both councils will continue to be an important part of the, the heritage of the local area and of the, the two councils um, heritage collections that um, um, uh, even though the number of people who may be accessing them on site may be reduced, the the, the accessibility has increased uh, many times over the the period that I've been been working in the archives. You know, if you if you go back 30 years, you had to go look through card indexes and then paper lists, and you had to visit the archives. Now you can just go online, see what we've got, and as we move forward with digital archives that you'll probably be able to access the digital content directly just through the catalog and then click a button and then click through to the actual thing. So that may be a um, uh, an oral history recording or it may be a digitized image or it may be a born digital record, which is you know, a record that's never seen anything other than uh, uh, being in electronic format. So it may be you know, a PDF or um, uh, a JPEG or whatever. Some of us even remember the uh, card index. 
<laughs> it's still there in the archives <laughs> but it's a lovely old cabinet which uh, unfortunately is uh, probably not going to uh, see the uh, be moved over the uh, thing so if anybody wants a, a nice old cabinet which with lots of index cards in they can uh, they're very welcome to it well, you never know kim this might come into its own again at some <laughs> point <laughs> any other comments or observations well, thank, thank you, Kim. I think it's, it is comforting to uh, to recognise that actually the situation here is reflected across the UK. And uh, and I thought, you know, there's always positives and negatives that come out of every situation, isn't there? And the point that you make about the worldwide access to our uh, archives is a very valuable one and when we think how many people are accessing it which wouldn't have happened perhaps from uh, for, for some time really so Covid has had some benefits in, in that regard but a, a couple of positives I thought in your report was the return of school visits and although it's not yet back to its previous level that nevertheless is encouraging and maybe reflects the, the situations in schools where confidence is gradually growing. But of course, schools have a lot to catch up on anyway. But good to see that schools are coming back. And also the Glamorgan Family History Society is, is coming back to continue the indexing. So that's yes. that's a couple of positives, really, I thought. Thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, uh, another frustration, unfortunately, has been the work on uh, so-called clip clip corner, or uh, as it's now known, the Wales Broadcast Archive, which is a project that is spearheaded by the National Library of Wales and will provide access to a TV archive. And I think this has been a regular on the um, uh, uh, the agenda. Uh, or in my report for the last few quarters at least. Um, the project has slipped quite a, quite a lot and they're now looking at opening the, um, the CLIP Centre at the National Library of Wales in Aberystwyth on in March, uh, together with the CLIP Corner at uh, the Wales Millennium Centre in Cardiff um, in March at the same time. Um, Swansea is actually in the vanguard of the local authority clip corners together with Carmarthenshire and um, the um, uh, I don't know which of us is going to win in the race actually but I suspect it'll be Carmarthenshire but the um, will certainly be there up amongst the the first of the clip corners to open but of course, we we are time limited in the amount of time we have in the Civic Centre, unlike Carmarthenshire, which is in a new building. So the more, the longer it drags on, the less time the clip corner will actually be in the Civic Centre, which is a little bit frustrating. Uh, I think it's far more frustrating for the National Library of Wales because they've employed uh, outreach and engagement officers and there's nothing to uh engage with at the moment which is very uh, must be very frustrating for them uh and I, i'm not a hundred percent sure uh of the the causes of the um uh, uh the delay although i do sit on the project board but uh it, it's technical issues relating to the um making the um archive available and also with regard to the National Library uh, opening the um, the Clip Centre. So obviously the, the, the core HQ has to open before the branch is open. So uh, um, I believe that they, they will be ready in the next couple of months. But I, I would suspect we will open in Swansea somewhere around about uh, between May and June. Uh, and I haven't forgotten that I've promised to show members around the um, how it works and so on. Uh, planning is going forward for how this could be transferred over to the new city centre hub as well, because uh, um, it is uh, it, it has the potential to to be something that widens the interest of um, you know, it will it will appeal to um, perhaps an audience that isn't necessarily wanting to look at um, um, uh, 
paper archives, but wants to uh, wants to view old TV programmes that they remember and so on. So uh, I, I think it's it's quite an exciting thing. Uh, it's it's already there are already um, TV archives available in Manchester, Birmingham libraries, um, and uh, I think this is uh, this is a very good thing for Wales general generally. Um, I'll move go on unless I see any um, any hands in the air. At, um, moving on, um, third frustration uh, has been that the um, relating to the outreach and educational activity. Um, this is a subject which has been also been in quite a few quarterly reports relating to the digitization of archival material relating to Wales's link to the historic transatlantic slave trade, which was part of a bid on behalf of all Welsh archives to um, a fund called the Anti-Racist Wales Culture, Heritage and Sport Fund. And I'm afraid it didn't achieve funding, although the other two um, uh, project work streams which uh, were put forward by the Welsh Archives did achieve funding. So I think Welsh Government thinks this is um, a very valuable thing to do and certainly uh, the teachers that we're working with think this is a very valuable thing to do and of course as men I'm sure all members will be aware the curriculum for Wales is changing and there are there is a much greater emphasis on uh, connecting national events with local history and and Welsh history. So I um, I am absolutely convinced that that there is a need for this. It's just finding the funding and the capacity to to carry out the work. And I'll continue to plug for that. Um, just jumping down. We are working with um, Partneriaeth, which is a, um, a consortium. If I'm not mistaken, I think it's Swansea, Carmarthenshire, and Pembrokeshire and Ceredigion. Uh, but no, Ceredigion <laughs> <laughs> isn't part of it. Ah, right. Swansea, Carmarthenshire, and Pembrokeshire, and uh, not Neath Potomac though. That's right. Yeah. Um, so we are uh, working with. Partneri ICE, which is uh, on uh, curriculum development and working on part of, part of the new curriculum involves um, Nevin, which is the, I suppose, uh, a broad uh, translation of that might be my square mile or, or something along those lines if you're trying to look for a, uh, um, a phrase to, to capture it. So, um, it's quite exciting what um, they've come up with, which would involve primary schools working with secondary schools and um, uh, primary schools doing some local history research and then uh, sharing that with their local secondary school. And it's uh, this interchange between primary and secondary schools, I think is quite a, an interesting development going going forward and, and obviously uh, they're working with the secondary schools where the prime which are the primary schools are feeders to those secondary schools so it's kind of, uh, kind of uh, um, for the primary schools it's very good to be um, linking up with the secondary schools that the children will ultimately be going to so I, I think this this is quite exciting I <coughs> hope that we can also extend some of this work uh, with Neath Talbot in due course as well. And we have had some contact with, um, I, I think Neath Talbot, unless I'm mistaken, is uh, um, doing this uh, curriculum development on its own. And uh, uh, the lady called Rian Ashton, I think if I remember right, has made contact with the archives and is interested in um, similar similar things. So I think going forward, uh, I'm sure that we'll be able to extend this across uh, both local authorities. I'll pause there for any questions or comments.
actually I've, right I've, not. <laughs> I have a question, Kim. Um, with regards to, to that work between secondary and primary schools, is the potential there for visits from secondary schools to the archives? Um, yes, yes. So, I mean, we welcome visits from primaries and secondaries. And if, um, I'm trying to think all the work we've done with secondaries up to now, we've gone out on site because we both um, uh, uh, allow visits into the search room, um, but it's mostly primary schools. And then with secondaries, we tend to go out on site. Yeah. We have a slightly different model with secondaries because there might be 100 pupils in a year that we do a number of sessions in the school. So we might be there for the whole day and they uh, sort of take it in turns. But um, with uh, primaries where you've got typically a, a year group is 30 children that they'll all come to the yeah. archives and, uh, and have a good yeah. outing and, and so on. As Kim, I guess with the, the primary schools, it's a more manageable number, isn't it? Yes, the archive service. Yeah, so exactly. That, yeah. Thank you. Um, moving on, um, professional meetings and training. Uh, we, um, I, I think it's right to say those have all been, yes, meetings that I, I've attended in the last quarter uh, relating to uh, Pan Wales or Pan UK um, uh, activities and projects. Um, and I just put in in there uh, in uh, paragraph section four about the the work that the chief <laughs> archivist and local government group are, do, are doing relating to the um, uh, adoption records of adoption. So um, four years time we'll see the centenary of the um, the act which made adoption a legal practice. Um, up to that point, adoption was always informal um, and, and that led to the setting up of charitable agencies for adoption and local authorities obviously got involved. At, at the precise details when local authorities uh, got involved, I'm not quite sure, but certainly I associate locally with them um, uh, uh, the earliest records with church um, agencies or, or chapel. Um, uh, or religious organisations and then obviously later on with with local government involvement. Um, so these records will very shortly be the earliest ones will be 100 years old and uh, the chief archivist group is trying to develop a database of where the earliest records are. Um, the procedure that they have adopted, um, uh, excuse the phrase, the procedure that they, they will go through will be um, to uh, contact the social services departments of local authorities. Uh, however, it's something that the archives will want to be involved with as well. Now, um, I'm just trying to think it's Western Bay Adoption Service for both Swansea and Neath Patalbot, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so and I do have links with Western Bay through my other role as data protection officer. So I don't think we're going to be in a uh, a um, difficulty here, but w the whereabouts of early records is not something that necessarily um, uh, the adoption agencies always do, because they're generally dealing with much more recent adoptions. So I'm saying, you know, when you're looking at records that are 100 years old, it's mostly family historians that are um, interested in that. So anyway, I will be working with Western Bay on this um, going forward to try to see whether we can um, uh, add to the national database of where adoption records are. Um, I'll go on unless I see any hands raised. I have a question, please, Kim. <laughs> um, will you be or will there be records in the court system that you would want to access for archives? Yes, yeah, that's a good good point. Actually, we do have magistrates court records because of course they had records of adoptions as well. So it's a it's a good point. They um, uh, in 
the early records, magistrate court records, they are adoptions are uh, sometimes noted in the main court register, but then later on they become um, uh, uh, there's a separate um, register for adoptions, and and that's that's something going forward that we uh, yeah we should be adding to the database as well. At, um, Thanks again. Um, OK, so we move on to section five here, which is about the relocation of the archives. The, um, the city centre hub is currently passing through REBA stage four. Um, and in fact, I've got a meeting with the um, design team, as indeed has Tracy um, uh, immediately after this meeting. <coughs> So Reba stage four is the technical aspects and particularly the um, mechanical and electrical engineering aspect of the um, of the design and because of the stringencies of the archive storage area, this is this is where the um, um, uh, this is key to um, the um uh, the archive uh, uh, conforming to British standard 4971 so it's a really important yeah. stage with, with regard to the archives perhaps less so with regard to the the public area but the the key thing is that the storage area should conform to the parameters for um uh, uh, and the environmental uh, uh, readings of um, temperature and humidity. Uh, a number of modifications have recently been made to the um, uh, to the design uh, in accordance with the advice of our external advisor. So we've been using an external advisor from the National Conservation Service to. Um, uh, to aim to bring the storage area in into the uh, BS4971. Um, I can't or nobody can guarantee that it will meet the parameters uh, for the thing because it only exists on paper at the moment. Um, the latest uh, modelling has it within, but um, it's I have to say it's just very, very, very closely within um, the um, one of the parameters. If I the uh, margin of tolerance is 0 0.05 degrees centigrade, so that's uh, a fraction of a degree centigrade within the thing. However, um, there have been um, two modifications which I think are very important to to raise. Um, if members were to Several meetings ago, we looked at the uh, it was the June meeting because it was during the very hot or just after the very hot phase. So there is now going to be cooling to the. Uh, if you remember from the designs, there's um, a cavity wall uh, or which is referred to as a plenum or plenum, and there is now going to be additional cooling to that to mitigate against high summer temperatures. And there's also going to be a um, dehumidification system installed directly into the um, the storage area. These are two modifications which were made um, a couple of weeks ago. It was uh, agreed that they would be um, uh, added to the design and fresh modelling has taken place. As I say, there'll be a meeting meetings taking place immediately after this um, this meeting where um, we've got a revised technical brief for the the archive strong room and that will be discussed uh, together with the um, uh, uh, the public area as well um, the the attendees including Welsh government and the national archives who are two of our primary stakeholders in terms of the regulation of the um, uh, uh, the archive service. Uh, as, as you're aware, the the archives are, are recognised as a place of deposit for um, central government um, 
records, primarily records of magistrate courts, but also some other um, central government um, uh, agencies. And so the, the National Archives has a, um, uh, a regulatory role there, as indeed does Welsh Government since the, um, the um, all archive services are subject to um, the um, provisions of the Local Government Wales Act 1994, if I've got my year right there. So um, the um, uh, Section 60 there. Um, I perhaps stop for comments and questions from members at this point. Are there any comments or questions for Kim? No, not. no, thank you. So obviously this is something that I'll continue to report on to the um, uh, to the committee in future meetings. Um, the, the the timescale that we're working to is um, the well, the timescale for the opening of the new building is the first quarter of the financial year 2024-2025 uh, so looking at um, March 2024 onwards but obviously the um, the transfer of the archive collection a can't be rushed but b it has to the, um, uh, the the environmental conditions in both strong rooms need to be balanced before you can transfer the collection so if it takes longer it takes longer but the the main thing is that the temperature and humidity in one strong room will have been balanced with the um the temperature and humidity in the other and that it's 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 a specialist exercise we'll also be employing specialist contractors removals um people to to transfer the collection so it's not a matter of um uh, a normal removals house removals company transferring the collection, but we're looking at um, specialist movers. So there are specialist movers in the UK who are um, uh, used to transferring heritage collections. Um, these things are uh, familiar, Swansea members in particular, are familiar with the Glenvivian had to be moved some years ago and uh, so the council's quite familiar with the the process of using specialist removers to transfer collections from one place to another um and i shall keep you informed at uh, future meetings um on this and also the other issue that of the um uh, uh, the uh, feasibility study that's been referred to in, uh, in the previous meetings. And so I'll move on to, if there are no questions on that, I'll move forward to the accessions of archive collections. So um, as is usual, there's a, um, uh, uh, there's a list there of the um, records that, that come in. I think, um, I think it's fair to say that the the number of accessions has is also increasing um, since um, since the lockdowns that we we are getting back towards um, um, the the sort of quantities of records that we we had coming in prior to uh, prior to the lockdowns and as you can see there's a wide variety of um, records there and um, just wondering if there's anything that we can flag up on the uh, thing. Um, a number of videos from Peter Hall, which have been um, uh, he's been very avid at uh, creating and, and digitizing his video collection. Uh, Royston Neath collection, which I referred to at the previous um, uh, previous meeting, it's a very important collection for the history of Swansea. 
Um, and um, yes, as 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 seen seen in the list, the the the, the wide variety of things from both local authority areas. So uh, at that point, I, I'll um, finish my report. Um, uh, if there are any further questions and comments from members. No, nothing from members. Well, th thank you very much. That brings the meeting to a conclusion and all that remains is for me to wish you all a very happy Christmas and uh, very best wishes for the new year too. And Kim, would you please convey the committee's best wishes to your staff in the archive service? And once again, also convey our appreciation for the work that they've been doing over this past year, which again has been a challenging year, We're getting perhaps slightly easier as, as the year has gone on, but nevertheless still remains. But please do wish them a happy Christmas and give our thanks to them all. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for your contributions this morning. Thank you, Chair.